Am I the asshole? For asking if my daughter-in-law fell when I heard of her miscarriage. TW pregnancy loss. My son announced his wife's pregnancy at eight weeks after hearing the heartbeat. Unfortunately, she had a miscarriage around 10 weeks. When my son called me on the phone, I was so shocked that I just blurted out. Why? Did she fall? She did not fall. By the way, I didn't realize I was on speakers during that call and my daughter-in-law overheard my reaction. When she got pregnant again, they didn't announce until well into the second trimester. Due to my daughter-in-law ending in a very unexpected C-section, my son requested my help to come over. I cooked, cleaned, did laundry for them, washed the baby, etc. Despite all my hard work, she was still very cold towards me and treated me rather poorly. I finally asked her why and she admitted that she was furious when I sounded very blaming when I asked if she fell that's why her previous pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. I told her that I asked if she fell not to blame her in any sense but out of concern for her. I said that I am aware there are other reasons that miscarriages occur as members of my immediate family have suffered the same. I was very sad to hear the news. All of us were so happy. Excited about her first pregnancy then next day heard the sad news. We all called to speak to her directly and see how she was but were told she was not ready to speak. We tried to give the space and time she needed for the situation. I don't think she believed me though. Am I the asshole? For asking if my daughter-in-law fell that's why she had a miscarriage. Edit I. I now see that I was acting like the passageway of excrement. I guess I now understand why I was never invited again to their house to see my other newborn. Grandkids after that. They only introduced their new babies when each turned over half a year old. I don't think I will apologize regarding the full comment since the first birth happened seven years ago and it's just weird if I suddenly bring the topic now that they have a new baby again. I might be accused of pandering like my daughter-in-law has accused me of gift bombing previously. Thanks everyone for the wake-up call. Edit 2. My son did his best to be there for his wife for two weeks. One week was the baby and mom inside the hospital due to complications. My son just then started a new job and couldn't take longer days off so I volunteered to stay a bit more when he had to go back to work. I think her I'm sorry. I just blurted it out. It was thoughtless. I know nothing was your fault. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel worse would have gone long way to smoothing things over. Have you actually sincerely apologized and accepted responsibility for your words yet? It sounds like your primary concern in the conversation was avoiding blame. It doesn't matter what your reasoning or intention was. You did something that saw hurtful to someone that was grieving. If you really care about her, acknowledge that you caused her pain that you didn't intend and apologize for it. The estimate is that more than 25 of pregnancies miscarry. There doesn't have to be a reason or event. It can just be a non-viable pregnancy. Now that you know this you can refrain in future from trying to pin down a reason. Lessening the danger of making an already grieving person feel blamed. I mean, that's a pretty tone-deaf thing to say right when learning the news. You could have asked if she was okay or something. You know, like a person. YTA. This is one of those situations where you need to tuck your tail and profusely apologize. Not because you had any bad intentions but because this situation is so painful that it just doesn't matter. Pride doesn't have a place here.
Don't make excuses. Don't apologize through your son. Speak to her directly, genuinely and lovingly. I am sorry I said something hurtful during a terrible time in your life and there is nothing I can do to reverse that stupid remark. Just please know I realize how insensitive it was and wish I could. Info Why was your first assumption that she fell? You're the asshole. You were told she miscarried and your first words were why. Here is a tip for you. When someone gives you some big news. Traumatic news. Something obviously huge in their lives. It it perfectly acceptable and preferable to take a small deep breath and small pause this is. Where you think about what to say instead of spewing out the first thing that pops into your head. You're the asshole. Miscarriages happen a lot more than people realize due to a variety of things. Not just from something physical. When you asked if she fell. You basically put the blame on her like it was her fault. You could have asked anything other than that in that moment. Is she okay? Is there anything I could do to help? I'm so sorry would have been much better. Info at any time. Such as after she told you why she was upset. Did you apologize to her for saying that? Something like. Dill. I am so sorry for what I said. I was shocked and upset and did not mean to imply you were at fault and will not say anything like. That in the future. Question Have you ever actually apologized for that being your first reaction? If not, do so ASAP. Either way, you're the asshole for this being the very first question out of your mouth after hearing about her miscarriage. Maybe Mill has done something in the past and this was just the straw that broke the camel back. Just saying. I want to say nah. Your response was unhelpful to say the least but it wasn't said out of spite. You also didn't know you were on loudspeaker which suggests to me that if you did know your daughter-in-law was on the line. You may have reacted differently. But you do need to repair the damage with her. You need to accept that you hurt her feelings and that it is on you to make things right. You gave her a long explanation instead of the appropriate apology when she expressed how hurt. Insulted she was by what you said. You still owe her an apology. You're the asshole. You don't need to know why anyone miscarried. Nor do you need to ask any questions at all. Just say you're sorry and ask how you can help. Yes. It's none of your damn business. Light you're the asshole because it sounds like you had a big foot in mouth moment and are reasonably apologetic and didn't actually mean harm when asking that question but sadly may have hurt your DIL's feelings in the process. Is there any chance of having a big heart to heart sit down and having a huge heartfelt apology or do you feel that's long gone at this point? You're the asshole. Despite all my hard work, she was still very cold towards me and treated me rather poorly. Yay. Also, a YFKM with that take. Because that seems to show you just expect her to get over it because you did some chores. You said something that gutted her and seemed more defenvy than remorseful about it. You may not have intended to be hurtful but wow. You stepped in it and you need to find the words to have a hard conversation and own up to it. Nah. A lot of pregnancies end in miscarriage during the first trimester. It's normal to be shocked and ask blurt out why when we hear shocking and painful news. I don't think we should be judged by how we react to react to hearing surprising and painful news. It is also very normal to feel a sense of ownership or fault when miscarrying. Just have a conversation about how you didn't mean to hint that it could have been her fault in any way. Which it sounds like you did. Am I the asshole for not greeting my husband at the door? 
When your spouse comes home after being at work and you are still working, do you get up and greet them at the door? Context. I work from home. I'm supposed to work 8 a.m. 430 p.m. but my husband always pressures me to log off at 3. He works from home sometimes but sometimes he is out during the day for anywhere from 1-6 hours. He always gets mad that I do not greet him at the door. That I am not dressed up and ready for sex at 3 p.m. And if I work any amount of time past 3 even 15 minutes he says I am a workaholic even though my hours are supposed to be until 4.30 p.m. He also asks me to do some housework during my working hours nothing crazy. Just vacuuming. Switching laundry. Emptying the dishwasher but if I can't get to it because I'm in meetings all day or extremely busy. At work he will get mad. Even if I offer to do it after 3 p.m. He says all I care about is work. He also said I'm being ridiculous because I don't even have to work. He makes a ridiculous amount of money but I like my job and love my co-workers. And I've been promoted several times and make six figures and just never want to be completely dependent on anyone because you never know what will happen. Also, I'm genuinely not the psalm type. I would go bonkers. He is in sales so if he's not out at a lunch with a client or something he's home and he admittedly has a lot of downtime when he is home. So I guess he thinks my job is the same even though it's not. He says he only actually works a few hours a day. Anyway, my rationale for not greeting him at the door when he comes home is 1. Sometimes I'm in a meeting or on a call. 2. Sometimes I genuinely don't hear him come in. 3. When I do hear him and I'm not on a call I'll call out a hey hi whatever. 4. We live together. I see him every day. He also isn't ever gone an insane amount of time. 6 hours at most and that's rare. 5. I work in the same room every day. He knows where I am. Why doesn't he just come greet me? Am I the asshole? Is this something other couples do? <laughs> Dressed up and ready for sex at 3 p.m. made me throw up in my mouth a little. Good God this man is a giant location flag. If you both make so much money why not have a cleaner? It sounds like he wants you to quit your job to be a 1920s housewife. Holy shit location flag location flag location flag. Not the asshole. This behavior will only get worse. I can't tell you what to do but girl. Oof. No this is not something other couples do. Your husband wants a Stepford wife. WTF not the asshole. Not the asshole. You're working a normal range of working hours 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and making six figures. That's a job you definitely want to hold on to. Him wanting you to greet him at the door and be dressed for sex smacks of 1950s patriarchy. This is absolutely not what a healthy relationship looks like. ETA thanks for the award my first one smile. Not the asshole wow sounds like he's a controlling needy freak stuck in the 50s it's all about you serving him and being beneath him in more ways than one. Edit do not give up your job. It's your independence and your way out if you ever need it. Not the asshole Girl. He wants you to be pampered and ready for sex. Standing by the door at 3 p.m. sharp every day. He doesn't want a wife. He wants a plaything or a sex bot. Don't give up your job. Put your foot down. This dude is out of his mind. Are you a puppy? Do you drink from toilets and chew on shoes? Do you pee on the floor when you're excited for belly rubs? Do you lick your asshole at 4 a.m. so loudly it wakes up the household?
Tell him you'll greet him at the door when he's making ten figures. Carries you through puddles and runs ahead to open every door for you and rubs your feet every night. If you guys are rich, I'll move in and greet you both with fresh tea or cocktails. Your husband is the asshole and you honestly need to drop that loser. He obviously thinks that you are his property rather than his wife and equal. Unless you agree with him in that assessment. Which I know you don't based on your remark that you never know what could happen. I suggest you have a talk with him to tell him how you feel before it's too late and you wind up. Despising him for his behavior that there may have been an opportunity to correct. Give him a warning and if he continues. Throw his ass out. Woe W-H-A-T the shit. Stop the car location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag warning 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 divorce 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 location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag warning warning warning. Are you a dog? When my BF comes home and I am wasting time on Reddit on the couch. He actually comes to kiss me hello. And vice and versa actually because. Who the fuck comes tail wagging to the door to greet you but your dog. Your husband is trying to hinder your career because he wants you to be at his disposal. And honestly he comes across as awful. Work your normal hours. The ones you're paid for and just have him respect your work. Not the asshole. Dogs greet you at the door. Your life and career are your own. Have you ever considered that maybe he should come in quietly? Because you're at work. If he has time and energy for sex right when he gets home. He has time to switch the laundry and wash some dishes. Until 4.30. When he should greet you tail wagging. But fr the audacity of voicing these complaints with a straight face is staggering. Not the asshole and if he has so much downtime sounds like he should be doing laundry. Washing dishes. And putting a bow on his dick for when you are done with work. You are not the asshole. Maybe reread your letter and ask yourself why are you even with this guy. While we are listing all the things that are ridiculous. He is ridiculously demanding and needy. Not the asshole X200B look the door of your room and don't open it until 4.30. Are you posting from the 1950s? Apparently they used to teach girls in home economics that they should shower in the afternoon so. They can be clean when they greet their husbands home after work. We don't live there anymore. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. This sounds awful 3 p.m. sex daily as adults. Greeting him at the door like wifey on a TV show. Black. I wa and I definitely do not do this. Not the asshole. Who the hell greets anyone at the door? You enter your home. You walk through the home. When you see your spouse. You say hi. They say hi. End of conversation. Lol. Your husband has watched far too many episodes of Leave It to Beaver or some other 40s 50s shit. There's a lot to unpack with all that you said. But no. It is not rude to not greet your husband at the door. That's just silly. Outdated. Unrealistic. And unnecessary. Seems to me your husband expects you to worship the ground he walks on like a 1950s housewife. He's only upset because of the things you aren't doing for him. The possibility that your he looks at your six-figure job as a hobby is strong and frankly downright misogynistic. You need to talk to him about this and ask why he seems to value you more as an object than an individual with their own interests and aspirations. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole? For keeping my daughter's rose garden in the living room despite my son's allergies.
My daughter Felice absolutely loves flowers and has always wanted her own garden. Our complex doesn't allow outdoor gardens. So I surprised her by buying a nice indoor miniature rose kit for her birthday. She spent a great deal of time and effort into prepping the environment and cultivating them until they reached full bloom. They're super pretty. And every time we have visitors someone compliments her on them. However, I noticed my son Matthew seemed to be coming down with something. At first I just figured he had a cold but it lasted way too long for that. I also noticed he'd do just about anything to avoid the living room. Even to the point of skipping meals rather than sit in the dining room which is directly adjacent to the living room. I finally asked him what he thinks he's doing. And he admitted he thinks he's probably allergic to Felice's roses. I told Felice about Matthew's allergies but she pointed out that roses are typically hypoallergenic. And maybe it's something else in the house he's allergic to I didn't think it was likely. Though literally the only potential allergen to the roses. I brought up the idea that we might have to move the roses. But she can't think of anywhere else they can go. And neither can I. Our house is fairly small and all the rooms are close together. So I told her to just consider Matthew's allergies and left it that. Last night Matthew asked me if I could please move the roses somewhere else. I told him I could sympathize with his situation but he'd have to ask Felice. As I wasn't willing to just axe all her hard work. He told me he had asked her but she refused. I told him there was nothing else I could do. Matthew got angry and said I was taking Felice's side like I always do. I told him I wasn't on anybody's side. They just had to work this one out for themselves. I offered to buy him some more antihistamines but he just walked out cursing and has been in a bad mood towards me ever since. Right now I need some outside opinions am I the asshole for not caving in and moving Felice's garden. Most likely I'd have had to remove it entirely and I would have felt horrible knowing how hard she worked and how proud she is of it. You're the asshole. allergies outweigh a hobby. A human trumps flowers. Couldn't she just move them out of the apt for a few days to see if his allergies improve? If they do, then clearly the roses need to go. At least out of the communal rooms. Also, why can't she put them in her room? If someone has to be inconvenienced by the flowers, it should obviously be her. This can't be right. You can't possibly have typed all that out and not realize that you are completely and utterly the ah. You're the asshole. It is plain to see who your golden child is. Everything for Felice. He is allergic to the roses. Yet you are hell-bent on keeping the roses despite his allergy. Why can't she put the roses in her room? Which is more important to you your son's health or your daughter's feelings? Why ta you're giving your son unnecessary medication because your daughter refuses to compromise? The roses can go in your daughter's room and she can make space for it by getting rid of her other stuff. You're the asshole. Your adult daughter should be capable of understanding that her roses are not more important than her brother's health. If she doesn't, then you've raised her to be spoiled, entitled and self-absorbed. Now is the time to stop. If there's nowhere else the roses can go in the house that don't trigger his allergies, she can sell them or gift them to someone. You're 19 years late in starting to be a parent. So get on it. You're the asshole. You're only causing more damage to your son since his allergies won't magically disappear. Are you sure you aren't able to move the roses anywhere else? If you can't, then you have to get rid of them if you want your son to be able to comfortably breathe inside the house again. You're the asshole. 
You really think it's reasonable to expect him to skip meals for the rest of his life so his sister can have her flowers where she wants him. That he can't go in the living or dining room anymore. I'm sorry your daughter may need to move her flowers. But they are flowers. Your son is a human being. But if you keep making it so that shared living spaces are uninhabitable to him, then when he gets old enough to move put, don't be surprised when he never visits. You're the asshole. Medical conditions are more important than pretty flower for fuck's sake. Just admit your daughter is your favorite. He told me he had asked her but she refused. I told him there was nothing else I could do. Matthew got angry and said I was taking Felice's side like I always do. I told him I wasn't on anybody's side. They just had to work this one out for themselves. Mom. Grow a spine and get the allergen out of breathing range of your child. You're the asshole. I am already looking forward to your future posts. Why did he not invite me to graduation? Why wasn't I invited to his wedding? Why won't he let me see my grandchild? It will go on and on. And each time you will ask am I the asshole? And each time you would be correct. Wow. Matthew isn't wrong you're favoring his adult sister and refusing to accommodate him and his allergies. You're the asshole. Felice can move them into her room. Or yours. Sorry buddy I know the roses give you health issues but I love her more. X200B. I offered to buy him some more antihistamines. My dude how have you not gotten CPS called on you yet? Why not get a test done to see what he's allergic to? You're the asshole because this is information you could get before making any drastic changes. And assuming he is allergic and saying oh well is a pretty shitty thing to do. Op do you even like your son? Your son started avoiding common areas. Instead of speaking up about the problem. Because you've already established his place in your house. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. Allergies are serious and yes. You can be allergic to roses. I've had to ban cut flowers from my home and my brother hated me because he couldn't give my mother flowers for Mother's Day which was his go-to because of zero thought necessary because of my allergies. You shouldn't pick your daughter's hobby over your son's health. You're the asshole. You're prioritizing one child's wants over one's needs. Matthew is allergic and avoiding the living room to the point he is isolating himself and not eating properly but there's nothing you can do. Felice can keep them in her room or should be getting rid of them entirely. You're the asshole. Allergy is serious condition. If persistently fed by irritant, it may become worse up to disability. I would consider moving roses somewhere else or giving them away. You're the asshole health concerns outweigh flowers. Duh. Move the flowers. See if he improves. You're the asshole. I told him I could sympathize. But he'd have to ask Felice. I'm sorry. What? You're the parent. Why are you deferring the decision making to your child? Felice is 19. Maybe time for her to move out and get her own place where she can plant all the roses she wants to. You're a pathetic excuse for a parent. Your suggestion was really to get him more medication. Rather than. IDK. Making it so he doesn't need to take any medication in order to live in your house. Editing BCI accidentally hit the button to post before I was done. You're the asshole. Easy to say who is your favorite. You're the asshole. Put the roses in your daughter's room if they're so precious to her. This really does sound like you favor your daughter over your son. Am I the asshole? For not letting my brother hide behind the dead wife card anymore. My brother's lost his wife a year ago. 
They have three girls 12, 5 and 3. My brother was definitely one of those husbands who worked, came home, played with the kids. But that was it. His wife ran the show chores, raising the kids, making sure they went to school and activities, all the cooking, etc. All on top of her own full-time job. She died quite unexpectedly and to say he was lost is an understatement. So, I stepped in to help. Some may call it enabling. But it was that or my nieces would suffer. They do their part around the house what's appropriate for their ages. Obviously, I've been trying to teach my brother to do the rest I understand he just suffered a massive loss. And a lot of his inability to learn. I put on grief. But as we close in on 14 months since her passing, he definitely has just used me to replace his wife in all ways domestic. I've tried talking to him about it before and he'd pull the my wife just died card. Again. On me that I let it slide. My final straw was when I went on a work trip. Came back to chaos. The house was cleaned. Because the girls did more than their fair share. Obviously they should have chores but by his own admission. He did nothing despite having the time to. Oldest told me she was the one making sure the little ones went to school daycare. She's done all the cooking. She had to give up an end of the year dance because my brother asked her to watch the girls so he. Could go out with friends. I had a come to Jesus meeting and told him he needs to get his shit together. I'm doing one more tutorial day and that's it. He needs to either hire a housekeeper or nanny he can afford both if he's not interested in doing his share of the chores or taking the kids anywhere. He needs to get a calendar to remind himself when stuff needs to get done. I said it was this or the girls come stay with me until he gets his act together. He started on the whole I. She isn't your child. Sounds like he was using you as a babysitter substitute parent. He then tried to guilt you into going back on your statement. Not the asshole. Why WBTA if you don't talk to Ava about this yourself? She doesn't know that you only started paying attention to her because you had a crush on her dad. And will just see it as a parental figure abandoning her. This will be traumatic for her if not handled correctly. I'm confused if you care for Ava or not. The way you write makes it seem like it's mostly been a chore having a relationship with her. When she obviously loves you like an aunt. If you can't give her as much attention. Then you should definitely tell her that yourself in a kind way. Let her know you still care for her and send her cards or something. And can't you FaceTime her too? Max has to accept that your time will be limited when you have a new baby in your home and that. Family dynamics shift. But I would be upset if my daughter lost someone important in her life too. Not the asshole. But I'd be sure to take some time to explain to Ava that you're having a baby and that means you won't be spending as much time in person together and offer to FaceTime or do something else to stay connected. It's important that you prioritize your family. But Ava should also be supported through this change and cutting her out of your life completely would be a big scary change for her with no context. Matt is definitely the asshole though for trying to get free childcare from you because you had a crush on him. Esh. You made a promise because of your attraction to her parent. That is not something you should have done lightly. A child having adults disappear out of their life or greatly reducing contact leaves a kid with abandonment issues. You are allowed to focus on your family. But that six-year-old will be hurt by your actions. Can you FaceTime her so she does not feel completely abandoned and replaced by your child? Boy. She is going to hurt a lot over that. Not the asshole. 
If you're doing someone a favor, you're not an R for no longer being able or willing to do the favor. He has been inconvenienced, not wronged, and the inconvenience is his own, not yours. Not the asshole Max is taking advantage of you. If he is so interested in your relationship with Ava he can visit with her and do his own parenting. Esh. First Max for expecting OP to continue to help. But I suspect he's more upset with OP abandoning Ava emotionally and leaving him to clean up after. He still sucks for helping create this situation. Op you created this situation. You made yourself a fixture in this child's life. You are the one emotionally abandoning them. They are six. Will they get over or past it? Maybe will they have trouble forming trust in new people due to feelings of abandonment? Probably. You're the asshole for getting involved with this girl's life because you had a little crush on her dad. Your NTA for focusing on your baby. But you are abandoning the relationship you had with her. You're the asshole based off your post you can't just abandon Ava. You made the choice of being heavily involved. At least attempt video calls. It seems more like you're right-sizing your time spent with Max and Ava to be a more appropriate fit with your actual relationship with them. Relationships change over time. It should be no surprise to Max that you're living your own life and that involves a significant other and children of your own. Did Max think you'd always hang around as a sort of surrogate mom for Ava? Not the asshole. Esh. Did everyone miss out where she basically agreed to help out and be involved in Ava's life because she had a crush on Max and is now dipping out because now she has a fiancé and is pregnant. She is absolutely allowed to change her mind. But that also doesn't mean it doesn't absolutely suck for this little girl to be abandoned not only by her mom but now by Op. Op if you ever really cared for Ava. Let Ava know you still care. And that work and new baby are adult things that are taking time away but doesn't mean you care any. Less. Esh. You suck because you started this bonding with Ava as a way to try and get involved romantically. With Max. Which now has lead you in this situation. Max sucks because he treating you like a built-in babysitter. Which I am assuming he used to you always being there whenever he needed you. You need to sit down and let Max know that you still want to be in Ava's life but with your high risk pregnancy and then the arrival of the baby you are going to have to scale back on the amount of time you see her. Then talk with Ava. Esh. Max needs to be a grown up and raise his kid himself. And you need to be one too. You're about to have a baby. You need to be able to manage your relationship with a six-year-old. Call Ava yourself. Explain you can't visit as much because you're pregnant and don't feel good. Set up expectations of when you can will visit. Even if it's once a month instead of twice a week. Or whatever. I mean yeah you're the asshole to Ava for even trying to be something in her life in the first place. You did it because you were interested in her dad. And when he didn't want to date you or it didn't work out whichever reason it was. Would then make you an asshole to any other guy you dated in the future. Because what guy want her a girl who is helping raise another kid with another guy and that kid isn't. Even hers. I had a crush and decided that the way to Max's heart was through his daughter. It didn't work so I moved on and am now ditching a child who loves me because she was only an ends. To a means for me. I don't care how it hurts her. I'm just going to go LC without explaining it to her. You're the asshole. Am I the asshole? For telling my mom she can't talk to my kid about her miscarriage and take him to the grave. I have a son. 
I was adopted and grew up the consolation prize for the miscarriage my mom had at 20 weeks. We had to go to this fetus's grave every year. One of my earliest memories was her forcing me to give my favorite stuffed rabbit to the grave. I grew up with her venting about how hard the miscarriage was to me. And I honestly think it was super inappropriate and it made me feel like a second option to what she actually wanted. I obviously was never good enough. I recently found out that she took my son to the fetus's grave and told him about it. I told her that's an off-limits topic and he has no business hearing about her miscarriage at five years old. Now some people in my life are saying I am an R for telling my mom she couldn't tell my son about his dead aunt. But I think I'm justified in not wanting him to have to hear about it too. It was literally 30 years ago. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole your mum spent years trauma dumping on you and now she is trying to do it to your son. Your five years old is not her therapist. Not the asshole first and foremost. Five is a bit early to start talking about dead people he's never met. Second. And as important. You are the parent. She is grandma babysit and spoil the child. But she does not get to decide when kid is ready for different benchmarks in growing up. Bottom line is. Your child. Your rules. If she doesn't agree. She doesn't get to be alone with him. Not the asshole. Everyone is entitled to grieve for a loved one. But your mom is obsessed with grieving for the baby she miscarried over 40 years ago. I was in my teens when I found out that my mother miscarried my parents' first baby and third baby. Overheard my dad say something so I asked my mom about it. I can't imagine what it would have been like to grow up being dragged to the grave sites. If your mother is still full of sorrow. She needs grief counseling. But you are right to limit your son's exposure to her obsession. Not the asshole your mom needs serious mental help to be dwelling on this over 30 years. I'd be cutting her contact with her grandson if she keeps this up. Not the asshole. Your mother has unresolved trauma. As a fellow adoptee, I'm really sorry you had to grow up with this dysfunction. Which sounds like it resulted in your own trauma. You can break the cycle right now by limiting your child's contact with your mother and always supervising. Sending you the best. Not the asshole. I've had several miscarriages myself and while I mourn the loss. It doesn't control my life. For the simple fact that life goes on. Even when something you love dies. Living in the past or dwelling on what could have been just makes you lose out on what's there. Which is what your adoptive mother has done. She's grieved for so long that she doesn't see what's right in front of her a daughter and a grandson that need her way more than her deceased child ever could. And if she's not careful, she'll lose that too. For which I would not blame you in the least. Not the asshole your son is not her therapist it's extremely inappropriate for her to take a five-year-old to a grave and unload like that. Not the asshole. Your mother needed more help when it happened. Processing grief this way is not healthy for anyone. Not the asshole. I'm sympathetic to your mother. But the blunt fact of the matter is. Her first child was a miscarriage. Yes. It's unfortunate. But instead of celebrating you. Her successful wonderful alive child. She made your entire childhood about the one she lost. Putting a deceased child above an alive child. Especially for so long is not okay. She needs therapy. She needed therapy 28 years ago. You tell her she gets therapy now or you don't bring your child around her. Don't allow your child to suffer what you want through. Not the asshole but your mother is. I understand she is sad and had a really hard time. 
But her attitude is not tolerable in my opinion. People shouldn't reflect their sadness on their kids this way. Not the asshole X1000. Your job as a parent is to protect your kid from trauma. Your mother sadly has a habit of dumping her trauma on little kids. You are within your rights to prohibit her from seeing your kid until she goes to therapy and learns to deal with her grief. Your child does not have to carry her grief. You suffered enough for it. She needs to learn to manage her emotions. Protect your kid. That bunny part. Soul crushing. I'm so sorry this has happened to you op. This world is full of such cruelty and malice. Not the asshole. Sending you love black heart. Not the asshole. A parent told me I was only alive because my brother was a miscarriage. Hearing stuff like that'll mess a kid up. This grief and misplaced guilt doesn't need to be transmitted to another generation. Hang in there. Not the asshole. You mother cannot spend her life passing her loss. Trauma and grief onto each successive generation. This must stop with you. Not the asshole. The stuffed rabbit part made me so sad. Your mom needs therapy. Obviously. But also. Why pass on that trauma to her grandson? There is sharing your authentic experience when appropriate. And then there is orchestrating a show to indulge your feelings. This is giving orchestrated theatrics. Even negative feelings can make one self-centered. I hope she finds peace. I'm sorry you didn't get all the love and appreciation that you deserve when young. Heart. Not the asshole. Your mother needs therapy and you need to set solid boundaries. She seems to be stuck not processing and hasn't moved through her loss. Trying to relive it with your son is completely inappropriate especially after what she did to you. Not the asshole. Gracious. I hope you have a therapist to talk to about all that because what your mom did is no way to raise a child. And absolutely tell her not to talk to your son about it. It would be one thing if she were just generally discussing a relative that passed. But she's not doing that and you can't trust her. Not the asshole. Your mom has some issues she needs help to resolve. I don't think that's normal or healthy behavior on her part. I'd be very hesitant to leave a child alone with her though. She doesn't seem to have any respect for you as a human being. Much less as her child. I'm sorry you had to deal with that all your life. Not the asshole. Your son is too little to deal with the trauma that woman forced on you. If she can't respect this boundary, you may want to look into cutting visits or contact. Not the asshole. To be blunt, your mom emotionally abused you. Don't let her do the same thing to your kid. Not the asshole. I lost my first in my second trimester. And after discussing it with my therapist, agreed I would not tell my daughter about it until she is old enough to process it. It's a burden no child should bear if they don't have to. And I'm sorry your mother placed that on your shoulders. Good for you for protecting your son. Not the asshole. I would have had an older sibling if things had worked out differently. Instead of being the oldest of three siblings. My mom didn't tell me anything about it until I was about 17-18 years old. This was only done when the topic of miscarriages came up due to a family friend's loss. Your mom shouldn't feel ashamed of her loss. But it should not be brought up to a child like that. Especially if there is that much resentment. Stand your ground. And protect your child. Not the asshole. Your mom needs some serious therapy. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter pursue modeling? I have a daughter and a son. My daughter was scouted by a modeling agency when she was 15. Since then, she has been doing modeling jobs. 
including local ads and even fashion shows. She has walked in shows in New York and Paris. The money is minimal. But my husband and I put it all into a savings account for her college tuition. When she was a kid, she always wanted to be a software developer like her dad. She had stellar grades in high school math, physics and in April was accepted into a prestigious computer science undergraduate program at a great university. We were all overjoyed for her. She accepted the offer and everything. Today, she told me and my husband that she wanted to defer admission for a year and focus on modeling. Her agency has been pressuring her to relocate to New York City because there are more opportunities jobs there. I was adamant that she enter school in September instead of moving to NYC to model. I told her she would be wasting a year of her life when she could be spending her time getting her degree. She argued with us further and said that now she's 18. She will use her savings to move to New York. I told her those savings were for her college tuition, not for her to waste paying thousands in rent and accomplishing nothing. She said it's not like you guys can't afford to pay for my tuition yourselves. My husband thinks we should let her do it and start school next year. I am strictly against it. I think it will be a waste of her life and most importantly, I will worry for her safety. She is 18 but still so naive. Am I the asshole for putting my foot down on this matter? You're the asshole. People regret the things they don't do. Even if it doesn't work out. It's a life experience she needs to experience. She will resent you for the rest of her life if you don't let her explore this opportunity. You're the asshole. My mom forced me to go to college a year early against my will and even though I'm nearly 30 now. And have truly come to see the wisdom in you'll understand when you're older about most of our teenage me arguments. It's the one thing I'm still bitter about. It cost me a lot. In more ways than one. Let your daughter model for a year. It's not like she's telling you she never wants to pursue her other dream. She just wants to pursue this now while she can. She can always go to college later. But models have an expiration date in the fashion industry unfortunately. A year is nothing. If it doesn't work out. She can come back and continue with her degree. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You were okay with it while she was a child. But now that she's an adult. It's time to put your foot down. She's an adult. There isn't a real valid reason why taking a year off to see if this takes off or to make some more. Money. And if it is a waste of a year of her life. So what? It's her life to waste. She has an opportunity. Let her explore it. You're the asshole. She's an adult. She has every right to pursue her dreams. The money might be minimal. But and I am not referring to legality here. It's her money that she earned. Not yours. It was a solid idea to put it into savings for her future. She wants to use that money to invest in herself. For her future. Why do you think. As the parent of an adult. Your vision for her life matters more than her own. You're the asshole. There's two options here. You have a discussion with your adult daughter and come to terms with what she decides. And give her access to the money she rightfully earned. Or. Your adult daughter does what she wants anyway. Maybe you steal the money she has earned under the pretext of knowing what's best. And you no longer get to have a relationship with her. You're the asshole for thinking you have any right to stop her from pursuing whatever she wants to. As an adult. You're the asshole. It's her life and she needs to make her own mistakes. That said. You're not obligated to pay her tuition if the modeling career goes tits up.
Let her find her own path. She's not your belonging to manipulate. You're the asshole. She is 18 and you should let her live a little. While I understand that you are worried about her as a parent, you need to let her spread her wings. While she is gone, keep in constant contact with her so she feels somewhat safe in a strange city. See if the agency will pay for her rent and expenses. I have heard that some will do this. A gentle you're the asshole. She isn't saying she won't go to school. She is saying she wants to defer a year. Now is her chance to make a go of her modeling career. She will never have this opportunity again. Let her go and fly. Be there for her if it doesn't go her way. But don't fault her for pursuing her dreams how many people can say they truly went after their dreams. You're the asshole. If you don't let her do this, she will always wonder what if. And she will resent you forever. Besides, plenty of people take gap years. And if she's making good money during her gap year, then that will help her future. Also, software development isn't the guaranteed good job that it used to be. Job market is quite unstable. Things are changing rapidly due to AI. And breaking into the field is incredibly difficult. Either you can lose your rigid worldview and narcissism or you can lose your relationship with your daughter. You're the asshole unfortunately. I understand how you feel but she's an adult and gets to make her own life choices. Be supportive but also have boundaries in case this falls through. Let her experience what she wants to. All you can do is support her and teach her ways to keep herself safe. That money I would consider as hers and let her have it all in her own account to do what she wants. With. I would make it clear though that you and her dad are under no obligation to pay for her education. When she does decide to go. Former model here. Models have a shelf life. We make money in a very narrow window. Let her take this opportunity now. Defer for a year. And get it out of her system. She will resent you forever if you don't. How do I know? That's exactly what happened to me. And I ended up having a briefer career as a result. You're the asshole. If she's been modeling since she's 15 then this was going to be the trajectory like agencies send. Out their 18-21 year olds for the shows and fashion weeks. One year is nothing. It'll just be a gap year where she can make some money and gain experience living away from. A gentle you're the asshole. You're not wrong for wanting your girl to go to college and follow the regular course of life. It's safer. I get it. From my experience in the music industry. Let her try. Let her give her everything into something she loves. There is plenty of time to devote to college and a 9-5. Beauty fades. If she can model. Just let her do it. Honestly she will love you for it. I would still manage her money for her expenses for a while and let her earn her spending money. But let her do it. Anyone I've ever known who succeeded in the arts did so because they had supportive family. You're the asshole. You daughter is 18. You've raised her. And you can still guide her. But you can't make decisions for her. The hardest part about being a parent is letting your kids make their own mistakes. It's her decision. You gave her your opinion. Now you need to accept her choice. Am I the asshole for paying for a lounge at an airport during a long layover? I'm traveling with five friends now and we are traveling cheap. However we had one long layover in an airport with a great VIP lounge. The thing about these lounges is that they have free food and liquor. And comfortable chairs and shower facilities. I told my friends what I was about and they all said that they didn't want to waste money. So I went to the lounge by myself. I had some snacks. 
a few drinks, a quick nap, a long hot shower, and then I caught up with my friends at the gate. My phone was fully charged. I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and a little drunk. When we started talking they were bitching about the cost of everything at the airport. They send why I looked so pleased with myself. I told them about my stay in the lounge. Two of them got visibly angry. They said I was an asshole for not telling everything there was in the lounge. They had actually spent more on food and drinks than I had. Plus I got to nap in a comfy chair and have a shower. I said that lounges aren't a secret and that the internet exists. They could have looked up the same information I did. Not the asshole. You told them what you were going to do and at this point everyone should have an idea of what lounges have in them. Not your fault they didn't want to check it out. They say they didn't want to waste money but they went and bought food in the airport anyway. You can lead a horse to water. Not the asshole. With a long layover. Lounges are an amazing hack. Especially if you want cocktails. Airport cocktails can be like 30 bucks. Two cocktails and you've paid for your lounge pass. However, maybe don't gloat about the great time you've had when you're with people who had a rough time. Especially if you've got to travel together. Keep the peace. Info what did you actually say when you told my friends what I was about? Did you just tell them you were going to the VIP lounge? Or did you tell them there was a VIP lounge that had X, Y, and Z benefits and only costs dollar dollar? Not necessarily an asshole, but I think it would have been nice to maybe go into more detail about what the VIP lounge included. Or how much it really cost most people here VIP and assume it's gonna be insanely expensive for no reason. It definitely would have been considerate to let them know how much it was and what all they could potentially get because many people don't even know about this or what it they could have googled it. But you're their friend and you were right there. Info did you withhold your reasoning on purpose knowing that they wouldn't realize all the benefits of the lounge so that you could gloat later because it sort of sounds that way and like now you just want to be validated by the internet. Text from the lounge and say you completely understand if they don't want to but it's almost empty. Recliners available. Open bar. Hot showers etc. Maybe a picture. But also some kind of phrase about you totally get if they aren't interested. So it's not like you are telling them they're idiots for not doing it. Esh. You suck because not everyone travels or knows all that information. A good friend would at least inform their travel companions of the benefits so they could all enjoy. Together. Your friends suck because you are not responsible for their choices and they could have asked you what all the lounge fee includes. I've traveled with friends before and had the same dilemma of them not wanting to spend the money. But I took the five minutes to explain what all was included and then we all enjoyed the lounge. Together. Edit thanks for the silver my first award smiling face. Info how did you describe the lounge to them beforehand? What was their reaction like? Had they traveled much before? Info I'm curious. Which airport? Not the asshole. Like you said. They had access to the exact same stuff you did. They just chose not to use it. Not the asshole you asked if they wanted to do the same they said no. That's on them. I would have been like Dan I should have went with you but that's it wouldn't have been mad at you. At all. You're the asshole for not trying to invite your friends. Tell them why you're going to the lounge. Your explanation will likely include the price and the perks. And then they will make an informed decision. Do you even like your friends? 
You're the asshole. A lot of people have not used airport lounges before and have the perception that they are fancy associate them with traveling first class. If you like your friends, knew they were money conscious, and believed this was a better deal. I don't know why you wouldn't mention that food drinks showers are included in the price. Wait I'm confused. I thought you told them about the lounge and they didn't want to pay for access to it. But what actually happened was that you ditched them without even telling them about the lounge. If so, that's kind of a dick move. A little bit you're the asshole if the latter was true. Esh you sound incredibly smug why not tell your friends the stuff you get in one. Instead of just going I'm gonna go to the lounge. Bye. Info please. You told your friends what I was about. What did you exactly say? How did Convo go? What were they talking about at the time? You're the asshole. It would have taken you all of 45 seconds to say but they have snacks. Cocktails. Comfy chairs. And showers. We can drink. Eat. Nap. And shower all for dollar $XXX. Then you wouldn't have been an R. Keeping that info to yourself and then gloating about it to people you call your friends is an R. Move. Sure. The internet has that info. So did you. Right then. During the conversation. It wasn't a secret. You offered him the opportunity to go with you. Are they five years old? No. Then they should be able to make decisions on their own. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. You gave them the option. They declined. You're the asshole. It sounds like you didn't tell them anything about the lounge. And most people don't know anything about them. You're the asshole and sound pretty childish. Those last two sentences alone are enough to make you an R. The internet exists. Really, dude. Lol. Just be nice to people and do the right thing. Then you won't have to worry about being an asshole or not. You're the asshole because most people wouldn't have this kind of knowledge. I can't think of anyone I know who would think to look up what a VIP lounge offers. Because that seems like celebrity people stuff to us normal folks. You're the asshole. If you actually like people. You'd think you could have spent two minutes of energy before going to the lounge saying yeah. X lounge is open to anyone else for a dollar X fee and includes snacks. Alcoholic drinks. And showers. And the chairs are comfy in lounges. I think it's going to be cheaper to pay a fee and eat there than buying airport food. You're the asshole for two reasons. First. Not sharing info about lounges. Yes. They're not a secret and the internet does. Surprisingly. Exist. But these people are your friends. Not your worst enemies who you want to see suffer. So you could have just shared the information with them. Second reason is because of your gloating afterwards. Again. These people are your friends. Why are you treating them like you're glad that you are smarter than they are? Info are they the type of people that immediately shut you down when you try to mention anything? Because I've had this type of situation happen where I am trying to mention perks and promptly get cut off and then bitched at for not trying hard enough to tell them. You can simply step outside and stare at the sun for two minutes and blind yourself permanently. My brother has schizophrenia and used to do this because he thought it stopped people hearing his thoughts, he's not blind but his eyesight isn't fantastic after staring at the sun nearly every day for three months. Where intrusive thoughts and shower thoughts collide. It's quick, it's easy, and it's free. My time staring at the sun as a kid says this is a lie. Doesn't work at night, though. Don't let intrusive thoughts win. Guys that's just a myth. Edit hey quick update it's real don't do it I am now blind. 
I've been manic before and thought staring at the sun would give me powers. Stared around two five minutes. Admittedly it burned my retina. I had a purple spot for a day. However my vision recovered. Not saying it's impossible to go blind but I didn't. Moral of the story. Don't be afraid to watch a sunset or a sunrise. You can do it way faster with a knife and two-fifths of vodka. I always found it so crazy. You can look anywhere in the sky and take in the beautiful view, but don't look at this one spot. It is evil and if you look there you will never be able to take in any view ever again. It almost seemed dystopian to me, like something out of a dream. This is such a cursed post. Not necessarily. This is a story from a former optometrist I worked for. Someone had taken too many drugs and decided to lay out on the grass looking at the sun in Florida of all places. He went blind from burning his retinas. But after some weeks of healing, his vision returned without any real lasting damage. Better yet, I can stare at your mother for a minute and blind myself in half the time. Gif Gifi XTG 8B 9 AU Low 7 SHLPMU you can blind yourself in two seconds with a pencil. This has poor river water in your socks energy. My five-year-old self disagrees. About once a month my curiosity gets the best of me and I just have to take a quick look. Got some eclipse viewing glasses so now I can take a peek whenever I want. One of my favorite things to do tbh. Staring directly into the sun makes me feel at home. That's not a shower thought, that's an intrusive thought. It is faster with a fork. BRB gonna try SMTH real quick. Staring at the sun for two minutes will not blind you permanently, in my non-medical professional opinion. I honestly think this is why I wear glasses. I remember in grade school I was obsessed with staring at the sun. God I was so stupid then. But then you can't play video games. I used to stare at the sun with sunglasses on to see what I was missing, too many photons for young eyes. GIF GIFI L0 HLIP 5 KS0 um US 17 W. So is the light of the one true God soul. I'm positive I did longer than two minutes as a kid. All good. Yeah, but like, don't. Maybe we should open Reddit back up. You can also take a knife and stab your eyes. What's your point? While we're at it, you can also jump off a cliff to break some bones. Chuck Norris once stared at the sun. After two minutes the sun went blind. Didn't Mary do that in Little House? Blamed it on scarlet fever? Now I done it for much longer and my vision's fine. I see the intrusive thoughts are winning. I stared at the sun all the time as a kid, and I'm not blind. I do need really strong glasses, though, seven. It's funny but also true, most likely nothing to do with the sun, though. I can't stare at the sun anymore, though, my eyes are way more light sensitive now. Slow, I can do it in about ten seconds with a bottle of bleach. Joke's on you. I live in Seattle. Bullshit. I stared at the sun for 20 minutes a day walking to school every day for a year and I still have 20-20 vision. It's hard to comprehend just how truly bright sunlight is. Like, the lights used in surgery rooms are as bright as 100 sunlight outside is regularly 100,000 lux. It's just so hard to wrap the mind around the idea that the sun is fully illuminating half of an entire planet from a million miles away. This thread ISNT good for my intrusive thought-oriented brain. Face palm light skin tone emoji modifier hashtag hash. It is one of the things I can't do at 3 a.m. This won't blind you. It's not good to repeatedly do this, but I've done this as a child and my eyesight is just fine. This isn't a shower thoughts. This is our intrusive thoughts. You guys can keep your eyes open at any time during sunny days? My photosensitivity says no to that. 
especially in snowy winter. There was a Hungarian poet who did this during an eclipse. Lost his sight for two weeks. Then he wrote an angry poem to the sun. Laughs in living in England. I used to be a dumb kid so I can tell you that this is not correct. Life pro tip don't do it. I stared at the sun every day as a child. If you look at it long enough it stops being bright and there's like this crescent that moves depending on how you look at it. My eyesight is fine so I dk lol. Sure can I can walk into my kitchen, stab myself, and die if I want. But I'm not gonna. That said, it is crazy that our entire existence is hugely dependent on a giant ball of fire in the sky, that just floats there and can't really be looked at. This whole thing makes no sense if you really think about it. 15k people upvoted this. How have we not evolved to have eyes that can't be destroyed by something that's literally available to look at for at least half of every day? The sun hasn't gotten any brighter since the dawn of man. It seems weird that nature would leave such a huge vulnerability open, and not develop some random mutation at some point that created sun-resistant eye tissue that became genetically dominant. You can do it faster with a pen. 2 minutes. I grew up getting snow blinded for hours. Amateurs. 2 minutes. With the right kind of magnifying glass you could concentrate the sun's rays and blind yourself in less than 20 seconds. You can also run into traffic with a blindfold and get hit by a car. This one is about as deep as my shower. How tf does this have even this many upvotes? All of you, go sit in the corner and look sad. Don't give any ideas. There's a thing now of being transabled. People purposely disabling themselves to identify as a disabled person. Or that stupid chick that threw bleach in her own eyes because she identified as blind. Wow we have had some shitty shower thoughts lately. I'm positive I did longer than two minutes as a kid. All good. Found Trump's burner account. Thought this was our shitty superpowers for a second. You could jump into a lake and drown yourself to death. That's not a shower thought. WJT 2 km. VR 8887X2L2 J23. Has BZ JSJJSX JSJJSJZJZJZ's cowler. Wouldn't work for me. I'd have to stare at a big fire while being very close or something. Come to say goodbye our June 30th. Yes, I suppose you can do that. Let us know how it goes. You could also simply stab yourself in the eyes. Quicker. Not true, did this as a kid, can still see. As someone who would stare at the sun a ton as a kid. Nope. When I was little I used to do that a lot, just look at the sun for a long while. Yes I wear glasses, don't know if it's related because at the time I didn't though it was doing any harm, but my vision is the same from decades ago. Not with the sun a blood red from all the wildfire smoke lol. It's too dim to blind skull. I think I may have damaged my eyes as a kid by staring directly at the sun. I know what we're doing today Ferb. It's night where I live. We'll test out your hypothesis when the sun comes up.